XNA Game Studio 2.0 comes with a free tool which is part of the DirectX SDK called Xact, which is the uh, Microsoft cross-platform audio creation tool. You can find it under your uh, Programs, Microsoft XNA Game Studio 2.0, Tools folder. When you open that up, you get this interface, and, and we'll go into this in just a little bit. First of all, uh, I, I used my chord mapping chart that I showed you guys a little bit earlier. Here's a better look at it. Um, and these, these are just the notes that I decided that I wanted to use, and these are the chord mappings. that They map to the green, red, uh, yellow, blue, and orange keys on the guitar controller. So I sampled these different chords and notes from my guitar, and I saved them in WAV format, and here they are. So that's some of the different chords, and there's also single notes. And uh, I went ahead and copied these WAV files uh, into my content audio folder in a new folder called Waves. Now this folder is not going to be actually included in our project, but we are going to be using it uh, to build our sound library. Now the reason that we need to use Xact is because of the format that XNA and the Xbox expect. The other nice thing is that when you create your package with Xact, you also have other nice options such as setting the volumes of each of the individual sound bytes in here or you can control things dynamically with parameters. Uh, we're not going to do any of that though, we're, we're just going to set up our sound library. We're not going to do any of that though, so let's just set up a sound library. So go to the file menu and choose new project and uh, if you're not already in the audio folder make sure that you are in the content folder of your of your uh, project directory. Uh, if you don't have an audio folder there, just go ahead and make a new one. Um, I, I made a new one when I copied my waves in there. And under your audio folder, just type a new file name. So I'm going to type the name of my game. Makes sense. Guitar Matey. So this is actually really simple. We're not going to do anything too complicated. But there's a couple of things that you need to do in order for it to work right. First of all, you want to create a wave bank. So right click on wave banks and go to new wave bank and by default it asks you to rename it already so let's just call it guitar waves. Now you also need to create a sound bank. Let's call this one guitar sounds. A wave bank contains raw unaltered wave files. A sound bank contains sounds that are based off of these waves that may have different parametric effects applied to them or reverbs or different time sensitive functions on them. Now you need to have both of these windows open. So go to Window, Tile Horizontally. We see the Waves window down here and the Sounds window up here. Now let's add some waves. If you restore down the window and bring your uh, audio folder over here and go into the Waves folder, you can select everything and simply click and drag into the wave bank. Now we see that all of these are italicized and in red and this means that they are there but not associated with any sounds. So use Control A to select everything, click and drag it into the sound name area of the guitar sound sound bank. If nothing appears down here in the queue name, you need to make sure that something does otherwise it's not going to work when you get it into runtime. So the way you do that is up here again ensure that you have everything selected and simply click and drag into the queue name. And it's going to generate these queue names for you. And uh, that's, that's fine, we're just going to leave those the way that they are because I already named them in a way that makes sense. Push Control S to save, and that's our audio project. Now we go into Guitar Matey, which is our Visual Studio project, and uh, look at your audio folder under Content. Go ahead and refresh it, and show hidden files. Notice that nothing is included, which is fine. But we do want to include guitarmatey.xap. This is the exact project. By default, it'll choose the uh, correct content importer and processor for exact project. And now when you push Control shift b to build, you'll notice that it will start compiling all of the resources um, from the wave and sound banks. Good. Now let's go ahead and look at our audio.cs file. This is a new file that I've created and added to the project. And I'm just going to walk you through it to sort of show you what it does. The purpose of audio.cs is just to encapsulate all of the audio stuff in a separate file so that I'm not working with it in uh, game1.cs because that file is already starting to get pretty cluttered. So I'm making a static class called audio, so I'll just be able to reference it by typing the class name. 
And also because there's only really one audio engine at any given time, it makes sense to have one static class for it. And this is just a design decision. So you'll see here that there's four uh, private static members. The first one is the audio engine. This is part of the XNA framework and it, it's used to play audio. There is a wave bank which maps to our wave bank, a sound bank which maps to our sound bank, and then I have two cues. A queue defines methods for managing the playback of sounds. I have two separate cues because there's a note queue. We're only going to be playing one note at a time, so we need to be able to start and stop a particular note. And a music queue, which is just going to be running all the time. Now my play method takes in a resource name, which looks exactly like one of these, chord A5, chord A major, etc. Takes in a resource name and gets it from the sound bank and tells it to play. Then it sets the static member to the queue that was just created from the sound bank and returns it. Very, very simple. Play Music uh, does the same thing except we're using the music queue so it's not interfering with the, uh, with the sounds that we're playing. We have a method called Play with Cutoff which is going to stop the last note that was played and play the new note. Here we just check to make sure that it's not null and if it's not null then we stop it uh, and this should be stop it immediately. If you choose as authored, this will stop it according to any audio envelopes that you've set up in exact. But that's a little bit advanced and we're not going to get into that right now. What that can be used for is fading sounds out or fading them into the next one, things like that. For now we'll just use immediate. We have a stop method, which just stops the sound immediately. The initialize method sets up the engine, wave bank, and sound bank. We are mapping it to our content folder, slash audio guitarmatey.xgs. And you can actually see these files too. They're going to be under the Win folder here. And once we build the audio project, you'll be able to see these files appear. So let's go ahead and build that now. Let's go to File, Build, and Exact. And it's going to process all these WAV files and build the XWB file for the WAV bank. Good, so now that our project has been built, we'll go ahead and save it. And let's go back into Visual Studio. We can refresh the audio folder. And under Win, we see that we have XGS, XSB, and XWB. Now the reason that this path is different and doesn't include the Win is just because of the way that this XAP file is set up. The XAP file references these files in this manner. That way when you go to deploy to Xbox, you don't need to change this stuff. The update method updates the audio engine. You need to have this in order to manage audio, really. And shutdown simply disposes all of these three objects. Next, I've created a class called SoundMap, which we're not using right now. And I'm not really sure if it works just yet. But basically what it's supposed to do is map one of these guitar notes to an asset name so that we can do it very quickly. We'll get into that a little bit later. But for right now, we have the structure in place to play audio. By the way, this guitar note enumeration is added into the controls.cs file where our guitar button enumeration is. So let's go into game1.cs. It looks exactly the same as it has. One thing we're going to do is in the initialize method of game1, make sure we do audio.initialize. This is a reference to our, our class, guitarmedia.audio, and that's going to initialize all of our audio project stuff. In load content, I'm going to start playing the music, which is called Shiver Me Timbers Backing Track. This is just a drums and bass version of the song. Every time that update gets called, we're going to update the audio engine. Nothing has changed in the draw method because, well, we're, we don't, you don't really draw audio. And then under handle input, we're going to add a couple of different things. And, and this is just mainly for, for testing purposes. Each pirate is going to represent his own chord. So the green pirate will be E fifth low. The red pirate will be a G fifth and, and so on. And that's it. That's, uh, that's how we get audio into the game. So if you press F5 to run the game, it'll build out all of the audio project stuff and run the game. One thing we notice is that our guitar samples are a little bit louder than the music. One thing to look at is if you go into the guitar sounds in the sound bank and find the backing track, you'll notice it's at minus 12 decibels. 
you can sort of pump that up a bit, change it to maybe minus six. And then when you save the project and try again, you'll notice a difference. The, uh, the backing track will be louder and the guitar will sound better with it. So now that we've got audio into our game, we're getting very, very close. The next step to do is to map the controls from the Guitar Hero controller and move away from the keyboard so we can have a more realistic experience. So the next segment will cover input and a little bit of cleanup.